Well, developing tonight at 5, more fallout after the state Supreme Court rules former President Donald Trump is ineligible to be on Colorado's primary ballot. Now, the state Republican Party is threatening to ignore the results of the election altogether. That's even after it charged candidates thousands of dollars to be on the ballot. Political specialist Sean Boyd has been following this from the beginning for us. So, Sean, what are the implications if the party follows through on this threat? They're significant for voters and for candidates. The primary determines how delegates are awarded at the Republican National Convention, where the candidate with the most delegate votes from each state becomes the party's nominee. But the Colorado Republican Party says if Donald Trump isn't on the ballot, it will ignore the results of the primary and award delegates itself at the caucuses and state assembly even though the presidential candidates had to pay as much as $40,000 a piece to be on the ballot. We're trying to make the best uh, uh, choice out of a very bad situation. Colorado Republican Party Chair Dave Williams says he would prefer to allocate delegates based on the results of the state's presidential primary. But he says after the state Supreme Court ruled Republicans' leading candidate couldn't participate, he had no choice but to move to a caucus, where party insiders determine how delegates are awarded. When you have unelected um, judges who were appointed by our opposition party dictating who we may nominate and who we may uh, potentially vote on, we, we can't we can't allow that to stand. The Colorado Secretary of State's office says if Williams follows through, he will likely end up in court. But he may win. State law says political parties shall use the results of the election to allocate national delegate votes in accordance with the party's rules. The fact is, it's a private party, and they have a right to nominate the way they want to nominate. But former Deputy Secretary of State Suzanne Tahiri says moving to a caucus could upset some candidates. The state party required every presidential candidate to pay $40,000 for access to the ballot. And they had to go on social media and say they're excited about it. I'm embarrassed every time I see it on uh, X somebody announcing their excitement, which is really just something they're being required to say to get on the ballot. But what what redress does a candidate have? Is it to get their $40,000 back? That's almost not even worth going to court for. No uh, campaign has uh, contacted me yet objecting to what we're doing. Williams says he simply wants to give every candidate a chance to compete fairly, even as some members of the state GOP Central Committee try to force a vote next month to endorse Trump and ask the other candidates to withdraw. I don't know what will happen, but I can only imagine in light of the Supreme Court ruling uh, to kick Donald Trump off the ballot, it only makes it that much more likely that the, the endorsement uh, will pass. William says he would prefer the Central Committee to not endorse any candidate, but he says he can't stop a vote if 25 percent of the committee wants it. Tahiri, who also sits on the Central Committee, isn't in favor of it either. As for the money candidates paid to get on the ballot, William says it would now give them access to the caucus instead if he goes that route. He says he's going to wait and see what the U.S. Supreme Court decides once these appeals happen. He also needs permission from the National Republican Party. So. All right, Sean, thank you for following this so closely for us. Some Colorado leaders are calling